The economic toll has hit historic levels. The government's newest unemployment report shows more than 20 million jobs lost last month. The euro area is facing an economic contraction of a magnitude and speed that are unprecedented in peacetime. New data out this morning shows 3.8 million Americans filed for unemployment last week. The coronavirus pandemic has left some of the world's biggest economies facing the worst recession in living memory. With millions of people furloughed or laid off during the lockdown, adult education courses and self-improvement apps have experienced a massive boom. Louise Van An is the founder and CEO of Duolingo, an app that has become the most popular tool for learning a language online, boasting over 300 million users worldwide. Danke, bis morgen. It's pretty interesting. We've actually seen it country by country. I mean, the app has users really in, in every country in the world. We really could track all the, you know, the spread of the virus by looking at our traffic. Wow. Now, your app, as I understand it, also uses artificial intelligence or AI to, to tailor the experience to each student. Could you tell me a little bit about how that works? Yeah. Uh, so basically, every time you do anything in the app, even though it really feels like you're playing a game, we actually um, have a pretty sophisticated system in the background recording everything that you do. So every time you make a mistake, every time you take too long to answer something, we, we track it and then we can use that to give you exercises that are tailored to you. Um, because if they're too easy, it's kind of boring. If they're too hard, it becomes frustrating. So we give you exercises also basically made to keep you hooked. And that has worked pretty well. And you use artificial intelligence for that. I just started learning French again on Duolingo. I'm starting to collect the, the, the points and the badges. How long is it going to take me five minutes a day before I can gain a good proficiency in the language? If you want to get to the point where you can kind of get around in, in France, for example, and just, you know, ask maybe for directions and ask for the check and, you know, ask for your meal, etc. You probably need about 30 hours uh, total um, okay. if you want to get to that level. Now, if you want to start having philosophical conversations, um, that's going to take a lot longer, um, you know, probably a little over 100 hours. So it, it really kind of depends. With so many people confined to their homes during the lockdown, mental health charities and governments around the world have been encouraging people to take up a routine or habits to alleviate stress, including learning new hobbies. Establishing a routine is of utmost importance because regularizing our routine is beneficial to our mental health across all levels of stress caused by the lockdown. See, this is the opening is here, so you cut vertically. <laughs> From baking to yoga, the boom in online classes during the pandemic has been extraordinary. One company seeing an opportunity in the lockdown is Beijing-based Dragon Phoenix Wine. <laughs> and its co-founder, Fungi Walker, whose professional wine classes are proving a big hit. I think being forced into the online arena by COVID-19 has really, really broadened the appeal of wine education. Because before, you really did have to pay for the wines, pay for the location, and you were parting with quite a bit of money. But all of a sudden, with online, we can lower the price, of course. So in other words, it's really attracted these people who maybe have wanted to hear a little bit about wine, but never thought of committing that much money to it before. You know, in addition to that, have you also had to change the content of your courses to better suit live streaming versus face-to-face? -face? We found out oddly enough, that for some classes, live streaming even works better than face-to-face. -face. People are less embarrassed to pop up with ideas, to give, to give maybe answers that are not quite correct, but they love the feedback that they're getting without the teacher having to look at them. You had to you know, embrace this live streaming approach out of necessity. Is this going to continue well after the pandemic for you? I actually really prefer it for some types of class. And also, I think that this uh, little tasting sample class is a great opportunity to give people who wouldn't be able to come to our classrooms a chance to taste with us some really great wines and to share with us their experience. So I'm definitely keeping up with this because this is really fantastic. While technology many of us take for granted has enabled millions to continue to work, learn and socialize online during the pandemic, for many, a generational technology divide has left them feeling isolated and alone.
Social isolation greatly limits the social activities of old people, which may predispose or even precipitate the sense of loneliness and helplessness, which are significant risk factor of depression. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Jordan. Meet Jordan Mittler, a 16-year-old from New York who has been teaching technology classes to senior citizens of his community since the age of 12. My goal from the beginning of this entire process um, was curing the issue of social isolation um, and how seniors feel isolated and left out um, of this new kind of brand new world of technology that we're all just so familiar with. I have friends who don't know how to get onto WhatsApp, don't know about Zoom, and I think their lives are not as... That's probably why I feel like I'm in very good shape. Now, when COVID happened and when the lockdown began, how did you manage to keep on teaching them? It took me about a week to get all the seniors hooked up on Zoom and started teaching programs that I think are specifically relevant now. So instead of teaching, for example, email, I, I showed them how to do grocery shopping online or, or FaceTiming is, uh, is most important or accessing the news, uh, topics that I think are specifically relevant now. The other day, the class was about online banking. So I was able to do my deposits online, which was extraordinarily fabulous for us because we had sent some checks in the mail a month and a half ago and it literally took a month and a half for them to get deposited so he's doing things that are helping us i think all of us navigate the the the, the digital world do you feel that it's your responsibility that it's your generation's responsibility to help seniors to become digital and to understand and use technology Yes, definitely. Um, we just naturally um, know how to do all these simple things. Um, and that's why I feel like it's our responsibility uh, to even take five, 10 minutes a day, call your grandparents, ask them if they need help with something, show them how to send a message. It takes a few minutes just to show them what to do. Um, it is really our responsibility to make those phone calls and to help the seniors um, adapt to this entire new world of technology. It's been said that education is a passport to the future and tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Like much of our lives, the innovations brought forth during the pandemic were set to define the world of education well beyond COVID-19.